Hey, really quick before this video starts, I just want to say that the background to this entire video will be of me playing the game or games that I enjoy. Uh, all the audio will be for the iceberg, obviously. Um, but to have filler, I didn't want to find any more stock footage. So I'm just going to be providing some gameplay of my games that I've been playing recently. So just wanted to give that a heads up. Thank you guys. Hello everybody and welcome to the new Unsolved Serial Killings and Mass Murder Iceberg. Now, this is a very big iceberg already and the beginning tier is pretty easy so I'm gonna skip all that because it's about Jack the Ripper, Zodiac Killer, kind of the stuff we already know. I'm gonna be breaking it up into two parts so please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you like the video so you can stick around for the next one. Let's not waste any time, let's dive right into the iceberg. The I-70 Killer The I-70 Killer is an unidentified American serial killer who is known to have killed six store clerks in the Midwest of spring 1992. His nickname derives from the fact that several of the stores in which the victims worked were located a few miles off of Interstate 70. His victims were usually young, petite, brunette women. One of the victims was a man, but it is believed that the killer may have expected a woman in the store due to the store having a woman's name. All of the stores attacked were specifically stores and were usually only robbed of small amounts of cash. All of the murders were committed with a .22 caliber firearm and the victims were usually petite, young women with long dark hair. Aside from the one which was a man, all the victims were alone. The Ketty Cabin Murder The Ketty murders were an unsolved quadruple homicide which took place over the night of April 11 through the 12th, 1981 in Ketty, California. The murders took place in house number 28 of the Ketty's Resort. The bodies of Sue, John, and Dana were found on the morning of April 12th by sons Rick and Greg, as well as their friend, Justin. They were also in the house, but were unharmed. Tina was missing from the scene. Tina remained a missing person until April 1984, when her skull and several of her bones were recovered at Camp 18, California, near Feather Falls in Butte County. The murderer was never found. The West Mesa murders are the killings of 11 women whose remains were found buried in 2009 in the desert on the West Mesa of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Several suspects have been named, but none were arrested or charged, and a serial killer was believed to be responsible. Due to the 2008 house bubble collapse, development on the west side halted before housing could be built at the burial site. After neighbors complained flooding at the plated site, the developer built the retaining wall to channel stormwater to a retention pond built in the approximate area of the burial site, inadvertently exposing bones to the surface. The Freeway Phantom is a media epithet for an unidentified serial killer who was active in Washington, D.C. from April 1971 through September 1972. Numerous investigative tips came from the general public by a telephone hotline operated by the Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia, and information also came by the way of mail. All these leads were investigated to their logical conclusion. Some leads were easily proven to be viable, while others required substantial investigation. The Texas Killing Fields the Texas Killing Fields is a 25-acre patch of land situated a mile away from Interstate Highway 45. Since the early 1970s, 30 bodies of murder victims have been found within the Killing Fields area. They were mainly the bodies of girls or young women. Furthermore, many young girls have disappeared from this area. The girls' bodies are still missing. It is believed that many of the murders are the work of multiple serial killers. Most of the victims were aged 12 to 25 years. Some shared similar physical features, such as similar hairstyles. Despite efforts by the Texas police, along with the assistance of the FBI, 
Very few of these murders have been solved, and those that have been solved were, were predicated on confessions given by prisoners or confessions g under duress from the police. The Colonial Parkway Murders The Colonial Parkway Murders were the slaying of at least eight people, apparently by a serial killer, along the Colonial Parkway of the U.S. Commonwealth of Virginia between 1986 and 1989. During that time, three couples were murdered and one couple is missing and presumed to be dead. The killer has not yet been identified. The Long Island Serial Killer is an unidentified suspected serial killer who is believed to have murdered between 10 and 16 people over a period of nearly 20 years and to have disposed of their dismembered bodies in areas on the south shore of Long Island, New York. Most of the known victims were prostitutes who advertised on Craigslist. The victims' remains were found over a period of months in 2010 and 2011. The media has speculated about a profile of the killer, referred to by police as Joe C. According to the New York Times, it is most likely a white male in his mid-twenties to mid-forties who is very familiar with the south shore of Long Island and has access to burlap sacks, which he uses to hold the bodies for his disposal. The Las Cruces Bowling Alley Massacre The Las Cruces Bowling Alley Massacre occurred in New Mexico on February 10th, 1990. Seven people were shot four fatally by two unidentified robbers at the Las Cruces Bowl at 1201 East Amador Avenue. The gunman shot the victims in an office, then set fire to a desk in the room and left the scene, but is still under active investigation by the police department as of 2015. In 2016, 26 years after the shooting, a brother of the victim, Stephen Turan, who died in the shooting, was included in an issue of the Sun newspaper and one of his remarks noted, in this day and age, things like this don't go unsolved. How did we not get these guys? The question I ask myself every day. Numerous people saw these gunmen, so someone out there knows something and they need to come forward. Authorities are now trying to build a DNA profile from evidence found at the scene. The Frog Boys the Frog Boys was a group of five boys who disappeared in South Korea on March 26, 1991. Ages between 9 and 13 years old disappeared after searching for Salamander A, Daegu, South Korea on a public holiday. Their disappearance received widespread attention and caused national media frenzy, and President Ro Tae Woo ordered a massive manhunt by the police and military to find them. The Cleveland Torso Murder was an unidentified serial killer who was active in Cleveland, Ohio in the United States in the 1930s. The killings were characterized by the dismemberment of 12 known victims, disposal of their remains in impoverished neighborhood of Kingsbury Run. The Chicago Tylenol Murders The Chicago Tylenol Murders were a series of poisoning deaths resulting from drug tampering in the Chicago metropolitan area in 1982. The victims had all taken Tylenol branded capsules that had been laced with potassium cyanide. A total of seven people died in the original poisonings, with several more deaths in the subsequent copycat crimes. The incidents led to reforms on the packagings of over-the-counter substances and to federal anti-tampering laws. The actions of Johnson & Johnson to reduce deaths and warn the public of poisoning risks have been widely praised as an exemplary public relations response to such a crisis. The Sydney Ghost Train Arson The Sydney Ghost Train fire at the Luna Park Sydney in Milstons Point, New South Wales, Australia killed six children and one adult. On June 9, 1979, inadequate firefighting measures and low staffing caused the fire to completely destroy the amusement park's ghost train with all those individuals on board. The Oakland County Child Killer Name given to the perpetrator responsible for the serial killings of at least four children in Oakland County, Michigan between 1976 and 1977. The victims were held captive before being killed, and forensic DNA testing has indirectly implicated two, 
implicated two suspects, one of whom has since died, with the other serving life in prison for offenses against his children. Let's dive right into the next section. The Texarkana Moonlight Murders. These were a series of unsolved serial murders and other violent crimes committed in and around the Texarkana region between Arkansas and Texas in the spring of 1946. This hypothetical perpetrator is credited with attacking eight people, five of whom were murdered in a 10-week period. The Jeff Davis Eight, sometimes called the Jennings Eight, refers to a series of unsolved murders in the Jefferson Davis Parish, Louisiana between 2005 and 2009. The bodies of eight women were found in the swamps and canals surrounding Jennings. Author and investigative reporter Ethan Brown has revealed how police investigations have been plagued by missteps in the sheriff's office, contributing to the loss or missing evidence. The assassination of juvenile Habiramana and Creepin Nataramira on the evening of April 6, 1994, the aircraft carrying Ramadan President Juvenal and Barudian President Kryptian, both Hutu, was shot down with surface-to-air missiles as it prepared to land in Rwanda. Responsibility for the attack is disputed, with most theories proposing as suspects either the Tutsi Rebel Rwan Patriotic Front or the government-aligned Hutu powers followers are posed to negotiation with the RPF. The Marcelli Bar Massacre Marcelli Bar Massacre refers to the mass murder of 10 people in Bar du Telephone in Marcel, France on October 3rd, 1978. Three armed gunmen entered the bar and shot everyone present in the head, with the sole survivor being the owner's wife, Nicole, who was in the other room. The Burger Chef Murders The Burger Chef Murders took place at a Burger Chef restaurant in Speedway, Indiana on the night of November 17, 1978. Four young employees went missing in what was initially thought to be a petty theft of cash from the restaurant safe. While investigators believe that they have identified all of the perpetrators without physical evidence, they have not been able to prosecute those who remain alive. The Servant Child Annihilator, or the Midnight Assassin, was an unidentified American serial killer who preyed upon the city of Austin, Texas between 1884 and 1885. The Sorbquet originated the writer O. Henry in the 1885 issue of the New York Times reported that the murders were committed by some cunning madman who is insane on the subject of killing women. The Austin Yogurt Shop Murders The Austin Yogurt Shop Murders were an unsolved quadruple homicide which took place at I Can't Believe It's Yogurt Shop in Texas on December 6th, 1991. Around midnight, a police patrolman reported a fire in the shop, and first responders discovered bodies of the girls inside. The victims had been shot in the head. Some had been. A 22 and a 380 pistol were used to commit the murders. The Connecticut River Valley Killer In the mid-1980s, Three young women disappeared around Claremont in 1985 and 1986. The skeletal remains of two of the women were recovered within a thousand feet of each other in a wooded area in New Hampshire. The condition of the remains made the cause of death difficult to determine, but certain factors pointed to multiple stab wounds. Between the recovery of the first and second bodies, a 36-year-old woman was stabbed to death in a frenzied attack inside her home in Vermont. Ten days later, the remains of the third missing woman were found. An autopsy again revealed evidence of multiple stab wounds. The perpetrator was never caught. The Atlanta Ripper 
was an unidentified serial killer who was suspected of killing at least 15 Atlanta women in 1911 and 1912. Most of, if not all the murders, were committed on African Americans. As news of the murders continued to spread, the black population of Atlanta filled with terror. On July 3, 1912, after the eighth consecutive killing, the Baltimore Sun reported that the news of the murders caused few black women to go on the streets at night who were refusing to go to work after dark. Mr. Cruel Mr. Cruel is an Australian serial child rapist who attacked three girls in the northern and eastern suburbs of Melbourne, Victoria in the late 1980s and early 1990s. There was a reward of 200000 for the two abductions. In April 2016, 25 years after the 1991 abduction and the murders of Carmine Chan, Victoria Police increased the reward for information that leads to Mr. Kroll's arrest and conviction from 100000 to $1 million. A newspaper name gave him the moniker of Mr. Kroll. The Walton Triple Murder a triple homicide was committed in Walton, Massachusetts. All had their throat slits from ear to ear with such a great force that they were nearly decapitated. Thousands of dollars worth of marijuana and money were left covering their mutilated bodies. In all, $5,000 was left in the apartment. The local district attorney said it appeared that the killer and the victims knew each other and the murders were not random. Going to our next and final layer for this video, Bible John. Bible John is an unidentified serial killer who is believed to have murdered three young women between 1968 and 1969 in Scotland. Bible John's victims were all young brunette women between the ages of 25 and 32, all of whom who had met their murderer had at the Barland Ballroom, a dance hall and music venue in the city. The perpetrator has never been identified, and the case remains both unsolved and one of the most expensive manhunts in Scottish criminal history. The Monster of Florence Is the name given by a serial killer who stays in Italy and has killed 14 people between 1974 and 1985. The victims were young, amorous couples, parked or camped in the countryside areas of the vicinity of Florence during new moons. Multiple weapons were used in the murders, including a 22 caliber Beretta gun and a knife. In half of the cases, sex organs were excised from the bodies of the female victims were recovered, the removal of which appeared in the motive for the crime. The Oklahoma Girl Scout Murders occurred on the morning of June 13, 1977, at Camp Scott in Mays County, Oklahoma. The victims were three Girl Scouts between the ages of 8 and 10, who were raped and murdered. The case was classified as solved when Jean Hart, a local jail escapee with the history of violence, was arrested. However, he was acquitted when he stood trial for the crime. The case has not been solved. The Thames Toros Murders This was a series of unsolved murders which occurred in London from 1887 to 1889. The series included four incidents which were filed as belonging to the same series. None of the cases were solved and only one of the four victims were identified. In addition, other murders of a similar kind taking place between 1873 and 1902 have also been associated with the same murder series. The Alphabet Murders are an unsolved series of child murders which occurred between 1971 and 1973 in New York. All three victims were girls ages 10 or 11 whose surname began with the same letter of that of her first name. Each victim had been sexually assaulted and murdered by either manual or ligature strangulation. The Dardeen Family Murders 
On the evening of November 18, 1987, police went to the mobile home of Russell Keith Dardine and his family outside Illinois, United States. After he had failed to show up for work that day, there they found the bodies of his wife and son, both brutally beaten. Ruby Dardine, who had been pregnant with the couple's daughter, had been beaten so badly that she had went into labor, and the killer had also beaten the baby. No suspects were identified in the quadruple homicide. The New Bedford Highway Killer The New Bedford Highway Killer is an unidentified serial killer responsible for the deaths of at least nine women and the disappearance of two additional women in New Bedford, Massachusetts. All the killer's victims were known sex workers or had struggles with addiction. Jack the Stripper <laughs> Jack the Stripper is the name of a series of six murders in West London, England in 1964 and 1965. The victims, all prostitutes, were found undressed in or near the River Thames, leading the press to the nickname Jack the Stripper. Despite intense media interest in one of the most biggest manhunts in Scotland's Yard's history, the case is still unsolved. The Frank Ford Slasher The Frank Ford Slasher is the name given by the media to a possible serial killer who operated in and around the neighborhood of Frankford, Pennsylvania from 1985 to 1990. Leonard Christopher was convicted in the murder of one of the nine supposedly linked victims, but the others remain unsolved. All the victims were sexually assaulted and stabbed to death. Several of the victims were seen with a middle-aged white man shortly before their deaths. The Wonderland Murders are four unsolved murders that occurred in Los Angeles, California on July 1st, 1981. It is assumed that the five people were targeted to be killed in the known drug house of the Wonderland gang. They all died from extensive blunt force trauma injuries. The Gay Lang Bahru Family Murders All four children in the Tan family were found dead in their flat at Block 58 Gay Lang Bahru. They were slashed to death and their bodies were left piled on top of each other. The children ranged from 5 to 10 years of age at the time of death. The Gota Chemical Attack The Gota Chemical Attack occurred in Gota, Syria during the Syrian Civil War in the early hours of August 21, 2013. Two opposition-controlled areas in the suburbs around Damascus were struck by rockets containing the chemical agent sarin. Estimates of the death toll range from at least 281 to 1,729. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please try to leave a like and, you know, leave a comment telling me what I need to work on or what I need to do. Uh, a lot of my videos and upcoming videos are all going to be testing videos and pilot videos just to see what I can uh, get to and stick. Uh, obviously, I have the part two of this video coming out and uh, I have my big project retrospective video I have. So uh, please hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a like if you can. I'll see you guys later. Thank you.